What's up everybody? In this video, what I'm going to go over with, this is a boat I've been interested in for a while now. This is the Zet Kayaks Cross. So Zet Kayaks, for you guys that don't know, Zet Kayaks are molded in the Czech Republic. So it's a company from the Czech Republic that has been breaking into the U.S. market, especially here like 2020. They really had a chance to kind of you know, as major kind of manufacturers wasn't able to make demand as much. Guys like Zet, Waka, and those guys kind of slid in and was able to grab some of that market share of boats. Uh, and it gave the U.S. market a chance to see kind of what else is out there. I've seen these boats before, boats like the Zet Cross, um, like the Zet Velcro, the Raptor, uh, the Toro, I've actually paddled the Zet Toro back in the day, just kind of like gave it a quick kind of downriver paddle. Pretty good. I mean, it's they, it was nothing revolutionary. But one thing that really interested me is the outfitting, the build quality and kind of the outfitting. And that's what I'm going to go over with with you guys today. One thing that's going to stand out to a lot of people is the the diamond-shaped seat right here. And, I, and look how well, and it has a throw rope holder right in the middle right there. Throw rope holder, a water bottle, and it works extremely well for that, by the way. They've added, you know, some bungee in there. But look at that. They've actually cut out that seat with a foam, kind of like a hardened foam seat pad. And it looks like it's kind of like maybe, it's like glued to the bottom. It, it goes along the bottom of that V, so right there where that diamond is. It goes under that diamond, so and it's in there pretty good. It's in there pretty good. I don't know would it come out in like a hard swim. The the problem with seat pads like this, they're not really screwed in. So if you swam and this thing hit like a bad hydraulic and got just, I mean, I've seen boats get tore all to shit inside of a hydraulic. Would this seat pad come flying out? Well, if that seat pad's gone and you get your boat back, what are you going to do? I mean, uh, you're going to be sitting directly on this diamond-shaped rotomolded seat for the rest of the trip. So that would be a concern of mine, but it feels pretty good. It's a little loose right here. Now, this boat is, by the way, this is not a brand new boat. This boat is over a year old, and it's held up extremely well. That's why it doesn't have hip pads. I don't think he liked the hip pads in it, so he took them out, so I can't tell you. But the hip pads are kind of basic. I'll leave a, I'll put a, I'll put a picture up of the hip pads. They're nothing revolutionary. The hip pads are hip pads. It had these weird bumps in it, and it mounted right in here. That you, it, it was a wraparound style hip pad. This seat is, does, I mean, it's nothing revolutionary because Dagger did this on boats like the Juice. Uh, they did it on the Kingpins, a foam seat. So this is like a a um, molded foam seat, a padding for the seat. We actually reached out to the same guys that invented a shoe called the Crocs. And if you guys don't know what Crocs are, every damn raft guide and every dirtbag kayaker out there is probably wears them until they wear out. So we were getting seat pads from the same manufacturer that was molding Croc shoes. But one thing that Zet did that I haven't seen, they actually made a thigh brace out of that too. So this thigh brace is the same type of technology right there. They don't have the turn down rim they just have these straight wings out with slots and it's made to adjust along those slots there. One thing also, they have really good quality. This might be the best ratchet I have ever seen in a kayak. These are really good quality ratchets. So the ratchet works, they've got it like that and then as you, you push up on it and this one, very solid, back band's super solid, back band's this it's a very cushiony back band, very soft feeling back band. Possibly the same type of foam right here is, is sewn into this back band. So that's, the back band feels really good by the way. Ratchets are, they're, they're similar to like the attachment, which is something you always like to look at. See this attachment here? That attachment is like what Dagger does. They sew it through the back band. That's actually a really good way of attaching that. Instead of using a screw or a clamp, is to web it through and then sew it. That's a, that's a good idea. I like that. Um, it cuts in through here, comes out right here. There's no adjustment. So if you max out your ratchets, you're kind of you're shit out of luck. And the good thing about that is you've got nowhere to slip back here because back here is where that's an area where it can slip really bad. They do attach it down right here. I am a fan of up and down adjustment. They did do that. They just attached it to like a bungee with a clip. 
and that you just undo that little clip and you can stuff things back into the deck. And there's a lot, it's an easy access area right here for you to kind of get into. So I like that too. Attachment point here, nicely done. Attachment point here for a throw rope. I had that throw rope in there to show you guys on that. It's adjustable, so it can go up maybe to put a camera case or a dry bag or something. You could attach it there. Water bottle holder here, and that's extremely well. That holds it, look how they've knifed that around. I like that a lot. Adjustable bungee there. The walls are held in by the cockpit rim, so the cockpit rim goes around, and the walls are held in by this um, this pin that goes through the walls. And it's a, yeah, it's, it's just a pin through the walls, through some tabs through the walls. Bulkhead, bulkhead's a little, Bulkhead's really nice and, and big on it. It's a really nice big rotomolded molded bulkhead. Kind of your standard attachment. Uh, Piranha, Dagger, Liquid Logic, you know the attachment through the side. They don't have seat bolts. So as you can see, they don't do seat bolts here. They do something similar, similar but better than Waka. Let me show you what how you adjust this seat. So I liked it. This was a great idea. So what they did, Instead of putting like what Waka, what Waka and Varus did, they, they have a seat apparently from the same supplier. So it's a seat with a series of three inserts that you take out and you pull out the screw, move it forward, put it back down. But what, what Zed has done, they've molded one, they've molded two inserts into their seat and they've made it where you just loosen these bolts up and you slide the seat on the, um, I'll go ahead and move it. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna loosen it up and you slide the seat along these slots. So the seat moves along those slots right there and then you just tighten it back down, which is a lot better, I think. It's an easier adjustment, it takes, that, it takes 30 seconds. The Waka boats, you have to remove the screw completely out, bang the seat, and then you have to line up a little tiny hole like that. Waka might want to look at these guys and think about redesigning their seat. That's an easy thing because they already have the, the cut down rim right here and the inserts in the seat. All they have to do is slot it. Put a slot there and then you could just slide that um, back and forth. I like, the back band has an adjustment here. So I have these little adjustments where you can kind of loosen that up lift that up nicely and put dry bags put anything down inside that's actually really good actually so you got like a watershed dry bag look how easy that's the easy that, that's so open right there that's so easy to get in and out so that's and you don't realize how how important something like that is until you're doing like an overnighter or some sort of expedition and you have to get things in and out uh, that's one area where dagger can definitely improve is the height of the back of the seat I could never get bags under there unless I just compressed them down completely, move my seat. But look at that, I don't even have to really compress this back down much. I can just slide that right in there. That's nice. So yeah, there's that. Take a look. Let's take a look at these things. So you loosen these screws up. That is what the thigh brace looks like. It's a molded in plastic piece here. And it's a very flexible tight foam. They're very comfortable. I liked it. I set in the boat. It feels really good, but that's the thigh brace right there. And to adjust it, you loosen the loosen up the screws here and go amongst some slides right there. But yeah, that's actually that's pretty good. I like that's that. something I've never seen right there. That's super easy. I like that a lot. That's so easy. And then watch this. So I don't have to take the screws all the way out. What I would do is loosen that up. Very good design on their thigh braces. I like that. And I'm using, you know, and they do have like a little molded in wrench right here that just stays there the whole time, which is a good idea. I use, I like the dagger tool and, you know, I just stick it down into the foam wall there. So I like using it because it has more of a handle on it. To use. Um, the bolts are all the same. One thing is every bolt on here is exactly the same from the seat bolt to the thigh brace bolts which is a good idea because that's another that's another thing the dagger did i don't like 
that there's Phillips head screws here, and then like number number four um, Allen key heads here. So it's kind of a mix and match. So I can't really adjust my my thigh brace with with the same tool. I, I really like that being able to adjust everything with one tool. Simplicity and the bars. They could have done one thing. I do know they don't have a security bolt anywhere. So what's funny is about that. They actually give give the the crook a tool to take off. So if I chain this down, I need to remember to take this wrench with me because all a guy has to do <laughs> is just unscrew these and he can steal your boat. Look how easily I could just sit here and unscrew these. Let's see if they put Loctite in there. They do have Loctite in there. It's a really nice security bar. So keep in mind, if you're gonna, if you if I had one of these bolts, I would get some sort of Torx like head head screw say like a security torx or something different than what's everywhere else just so you can remember that if you lock your boat up or if you lock your boat up don't forget to take your your allen key with the you. The handles are nice they put a curve to them the handles are real nice Let's see if we can get that in focus that looks really good i love that bar that is a very sturdy bar oops don't lose that huh it fell in my pocket the screw actually fell in my pocket but yeah it's and those are very short one thing that concerns me is how short these screws are honestly the inserts are very short too so that's something you guys might want to think about um, at Zet is get a deeper insert you can go up to three quarters I don't I don't like the fact that that's that's not a lot of contact into that into that insert look at that that is between the the bar and that you only have maybe three or four. That's interesting. Um, I would have went longer on that. Just some, just a suggestion. You ain't gotta listen to me. But what do I know? But I do like the design of the bar. The bar has a nice curve. They to are it. aluminium, so they are aluminum. These are aluminum bars. Super strong. You're not gonna break that bar. But one thing that concerns me is the depth of that that little tiny screw. And they have brass inserts, and the, the way it looks is they would have to change their inserts to a, a deeper insert. But that's an easy fix. I don't know why they're doing that. Honestly, I would have went with a deeper insert. But I'd love to see. Maybe maybe they know something I don't. I do like these big flathead screws. Instead of using like a truss or a pan head for your screws, they're using a tapered flathead. I do like that. Those things have a lot of pull strength. And look how nice and clean that looks. You don't have that big, huge, like truss head sticking up that's really nice and clean good good little cutouts nice cutouts right here I can fit my hand under there I can clip onto those real nicely let's try it I can clip onto all these pretty good they did the same thing they have the serial number back here just like the uh, walkers do right behind the cockpit it says made in the Czech Republic he talked about the seat the adjustment on the seat the bulkhead oh this is cool I've never seen this this is something different Look at this drain plug. This drain plug is an Audi instead of an Innie. I have actually never seen that. It's almost like a Coke, actually a Coke bottle. Yeah, that's, let me try something. Let me see if I can get this out of here. Just like pulling a tooth. That's what it looks like. It actually has the Zet logo on it. So they're getting, so they own that mold. So they're, they're molding that. They put little ridges on the, on the edge of it for grip. One thing that, that is really hard, when, especially when you've got cold fingers, is getting like a, 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 a little tiny. You can grab this super easy. And it has this little, little claw thing. It looks like they've designed for that too. That's interesting. Yeah, but let me try some. Well, I... I couldn't find a Coke bottle because I don't drink sodas, but I did find a, a lid that looks similar to that. This is just like a lid, which would be like a Coke bottle. Let's see if you could actually... Wow, look at that. Huh. Just any, any standard bottle cap will work on it. See, that's the problem. If you lost your drain plug on any other boat that has that, you have to get a drain plug. That's pretty funny. 
And it's nicely done. It's nice and recessed down in there. Let's cram that thing back down in there. Look at how that's nice and recessed right there. I like that. Big logo here. I don't know if you guys can read that. Cross. And then this. Logos on the side. Molded in logos. Those are definitely molded in. You know, one thing I was looking at is this. This area... Well, you see that, that sticky stuff right there is where, when it was on the container, the bubble wrap actually melted to that, and I could not get that off. He said he couldn't get it off, so he just left it on there. It just looks tacky. That's something Zap might want to think about covering that up when they ship them, maybe covering up with something so your bubble wrap doesn't melt to it, because I put everything on it, and I couldn't get it off there. One thing that's interesting about this, this actually looks like some spray-in logo paint. That would be really hard to make a MIG that fits that. So I've got a theory that this right here is some sort of spray in um, graphic. They do have a graphic on the bottom on the bow right here so it's another little graphic right there. That looks pretty cool so if you're, if you're going vert you can kind of see that. I like that. But yeah that's different. I've never seen that and, and looking at how it's kind of it's a weird pattern right there makes me think that it's a spray in. Looking at the hole there's a there, nothing revolutionary, it's a slight edge. There's an edge that runs, it looks like it tapers out right here. The edge starts about right here, and it runs to about right there. Your edge is in between these two, and it's kind of like a progressive rocker. So it's rockered, you know, it's rockered nicely on the bow right here. Flattens out really flat, and this hull is over a year old and look at how and this is a year old of running like southeast style runs so this is not like a year of just paddling you know big water type runs and look how well this plastic's held up so that lets me know and I haven't heard anything about um, Zet kayaks plastic so their resin feels really good and there's a couple of things that make a boat really good. It's also, it's process. So you can, you can make a boat a lot better by the processes. You know, if you cook them too hot, they're going to be brittle. You don't cook them hot enough, they're going to crack. They're going to be kind of smushy and weak. So there's a lot of things in how their ovens are set up. It's interesting. Um, really good quality in their molding. Their molding quality is really good. And, and it's held up extremely well. Look at that hull. Yeah, so there's a big flat area right here. It flattens out. It's gonna make me curious how, how it paddles. It comes up, it does taper off. The boat kind of reminds me of the 9R2 in a way. It has a 9R2-ish look to me. I'm curious how that's gonna feel. It does have that flat rocker profile up there, so yeah. I will be doing a on-water review soon, but right now, uh, just to walk through the fit and finish of the boat, looks really good they even angled that one thing they did they put these really short bars in here yeah so they have these really short bars not a lot of adjustment not a lot of adjustment on there and this is a nice big flat um, bulkhead so the bulkhead looks really nice looking it over everything looks really good I really like the fit and finish of this boat. It's very well made, very well put together. They've done an extremely good job in the manufacturing process. Looks really yeah, good. There's a, they have another boat that's coming to the market called the Zet Kayaks Chili. That boat looks really good. The Chili is another boat that kind of like that half slice. Market. I'm very excited because you know I love my half slice boats and I'm very excited about the uh, Chili. Yeah, so um, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll um, catch you guys next time.